I'd like to thank my friend Daniel for sharing this story with me about 15 years ago. Um, this is the tale of the Purple House. Long time ago, little Lewis Lee woke up. It was the first day of kindergarten, and coming from a rather, well, not great home, little Lewis was, was happy to actually leave, to go make some new friends, to get away from his mother for a little while. Um, they weren't in the best of terms. She didn't let him run around the house, she didn't let him break things, she didn't let him draw on the walls. Terrible, right? Mm, awful, awful, awful. So he wakes up, super excited, grabs his little backpack, runs down the stairs, trips, falls, scrapes his knee, cries, you know, little kids. He's about to run out the door and his mom says, hey, don't talk to strangers. And that's it. Doesn't give him a lunch or anything, just lets him run off on his own. They really didn't have the best of relationships. He didn't think anything of it. Just kept walking to school, walking to school, walking to school, several blocks away, all by himself. And he was approached by an odd man in a purple and lavender pinstripe suit with a purple bowler hat, a purple cane, purple pocket watch with a purple chain. Even his skin was sort of purple, had kind of a purple undertone to it. He beckoned the kid over, and being a naive kindergartner who never listened to his mom, or soon-to-be kindergartner, of course, he went. <clears throat> hey, kid. You ever heard of the Purple House? No. No, I haven't. What's that? <laughs> it's a good story. You look like you're going to school. You should ask your teacher when you get there, all right? Trust me, it's worth it. Okay, mister. He heard a noise behind him. He looked. Nothing there. He looked back. Man was gone. Curious. Very curious. So he went <clears throat> on his merry way to school. Had a normal, you know, normal first day. Towards the end of the day, it was a half day for kindergartners, the very first day. The teacher said, all right. Does anybody have any questions? And he, he was beaming. He was smiling so happy. He was glowing. He raised his little hand. And the teacher said, yes, Lewis. What's the purple house? Dead silence. Dead silence. The teacher started shaking. Her eyes became bloodshot with rage. She walked over, <clears throat> excuse me, very deliberately, and she got to his desk and said, what did you say? Lewis was getting scared and he said, what's the, before he could even finish it, his teacher, somehow inhumanly strong, picked him up hurled him across the classroom, up against a wall, where he broke through it. The other kids looked horrified, but not at the teacher. No, they were horrified of little Lewis Lee. She screamed at him, go to the principal's office! And screaming and crying and broken, bloody, bruised, he ran all the way to the principal's office. The principal came out shortly after. What is a kindergartner doing in my office on the first day of school? He went through the story and didn't say the question. And the principal interrupted him towards the end and said, what question could have possibly gotten you in so much trouble? And he very meekly, very quietly said, what, what's the purple house? The principal responded in much the same way. 
and after the horrendous beating was done, she expelled him and blacklisted him from every school in the world. Confused, he ran home. He was home earlier than expected, so his mom asked, what happened? Did you skip school? He said no. She noticed he was crying and she didn't even ask about it. For a little while. Eventually, she she did. He went through his little story and, you know, he thought he could trust his mom. He got to the part where he was about to mention the question and his mom said, Wait, what question could have possibly gotten you in so much trouble? And come on, it's his mom. They're not on great terms, but what's the purple house? His mom slapped him with the force of a hundred angry mothers. She kicked him out the door with just his backpack and the clothes on his back. He was off the family tree. Crying, confused, devastated, he ran to the park nearby, which was the only other place he knew. He sat down on a bench next to a sweet-looking old woman who was feeding pigeons and buried his head in his hands. The woman asked him what was wrong, and he said, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. She coaxed him to talk about it, and he did. And he got to the part where there was the question. The woman kindly said, well, what question could have possibly gotten you in so much trouble? He started to see that something was wrong here. So instead, he said, who's the president of the United States? The woman could see how this might be a little bit annoying, but not for a kindergartner. She said, come on, that, that can't be the question. What did you ask? What's the purple house? The woman clutched at her heart. She pulled out her cell phone, dialed 911 very sh 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 shakily. Minutes later, a battalion of police cars and tanks and helicopters and for some reason, an armored elephant came by to arrest the young boy. He was in month in that in month in jail for a month in solitary confinement before his trial. When he was brought before the judge, his father, there was just a hush. His father had been given some of the details and was absolutely enraged to see his son there. <clears throat> he said son from what I've heard you should be executed you should be killed but I'm giving you a chance to defend yourself because you're my flesh and blood tell me what happened and tell me now he very quietly went through the story got to the part where he was about to say the question and the judge his father said what question could have possibly gotten you in so much trouble that you would be here and you better not say the question that I think it is figuring he had no other options he just went on ahead and said what's the purple house it was so silent that if a pin dropped you couldn't even hear it <clears throat> His father was boiling over with rage. Life in prison! Moments later, he came to his senses and realized that this was a child. Life was too much. He sentenced, he sentenced him to 17 years. Maximum security, solitary confinement. And then he resigned. He couldn't deal with it anymore. Little Lewis Lee was in 
prison for 17 years, kept away from everyone, never developed any social skills, couldn't read, couldn't write, knew practically nothing. When he finally was released, he had nowhere to go. So he just started walking, walked and walked for miles. And eventually he came across a very strange sight across the street. There was a house, completely painted purple. There was a purple minivan pulling into the purple driveway, going past the purple grass, swaying very softly in the purple breeze. A purple dog came out of the purple doggy door to greet the purple people that were getting out of the minivan, including the man in the purple and, and lavender pinstripe suit, who tipped his bowler hat at the boy and then went inside carrying purple groceries. Little Lewis Lee was excited because he was finally going to figure out what was going on, what was wrong, why this purple house was so bad. He started to run across the street, he heard a noise to his left, and he was hit and immediately killed by a purple semi-truck. The moral of this story is to always look both ways when you're crossing the road. <laughs>